Welcome back, everybody, to the final segment of today's edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Hope you guys enjoy the show. I know I have. Thank you guys yet again in the comments, especially those. Shout out to Team Money and Parker Bledsoe who have offered up some trades for me to analyze. I love analyzing those trades. Hopefully, I have given you some decent advice going forward to help you out with those trades. I greatly appreciate it. Keep them coming if you want for me to analyze your comments i greatly appreciate it the show and the network will as well in turn but our final segment of today's show will be concerning very very deep sleepers i'm not talking about guys who like i've talked about before it's mere whites and things like that i'll talk about guys who i haven't talked about haven't even deigned to talk about because well a lot of people would have been very shocked, skeptical, maybe even mad at me mentioning them in terms of being deep sleepers. But if you are ambitious, if you do like taking flyers in late rounds, like 10 to 12, then this segment is for you. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's final segment. And let's start off with a quarterback who has been getting a lot of buzz this offseason and is in a situation that is very weird. We don't often see it. A team who has picked up a quarterback in the offseason, acquired a quarterback, goes out and drafts another quarterback. Of course, the guy I'm talking about is Michael Penix Jr. A lot of you probably getting very skeptical. Like, how is a guy who might not even start this year, any games, be a deep sleeper? Well, here's why. Michael Penix. We can talk about all the caveats here. We can talk about his age, even being the fact that he might not even start until he's 28 years old because he's 24 now. But should Kirk Cousins, who, mind you, is coming back from an ACL injury, either not live up to expectations or re-aggravate the injury, then someone needs to step up. And Michael Penix Jr., I believe, is competent enough to do that. Throughout his college career, yes, he's he himself has had a lot of injuries. Torn ACL at Indiana, knee problems at Washington. But he's played 48 games, averaging 12 games a season in college in six seasons and 67 touchdowns. So that level of consistency, that level of experience at the college level, translating it to the NFL, translating it to a team that really is in a bind right here that really might need Michael Penix Jr. should Kirk Cousins either show his age, not live up to expectations, react with the injury, what have you, might need that contingency plan in place, Michael Penix Jr. could add some value. He's a guy that you might not take in the draft, might not even stream for the first couple of weeks of the season because obviously Kirk will be playing. But when it gets to the end of the season and either... The Falcons are playing out the string, or, you know, Michael Penix Jr. has somehow won the job. I think that he is someone you might have to look at. And even in fantasy football drafts, you know, like, there are some people who might take someone like an, a Michael Penix or a backup quarterback. And if you are one of those people, I'm not stopping you from picking him up. I feel like he's an interesting commodity this season. So that being said, look out for him if in drafts you are that ambitious or as a streaming option later in the season. But another QB, a guy who does have more to prove than Michael Penix Jr. this season because he's going into his second season, highly underwhelming first season. But with a new coordinator, a guy we talked about, Dave Canales, working his magic with QBs, this guy seems primed and ready to go to have a big sophomore jump this season, and that is Bryce Young. Oops. I think that Bryce Young is really set up this year for success. I think that he has weapons now in Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett, interesting profile there, Dave Canales, QB Whisperer. And he has depth on the offensive line, so he doesn't necessarily have to, you know, scramble as much in Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis. And so, what with them trying to paper over the cracks, and I think doing it to some effect, I hope, for his sake, 
Bryce Young is starting to become a more and more appealing fantasy option because at the end of the day, he still will have his legs as a use. But the problem was he didn't have, A, the offensive line to protect him, protect him and bolster his ability furthermore to run the ball effectively, or B, have the weapons at the wide receiver and tight end position around him to fully trust. And this year, they're trying to build that. And Xavier Leggett, he's perhaps my favorite wide receiver who's not named either Xavier Worthy or Marvin Harrison in this draft. I think that he has excellent body control. He can run vertical routes, fantastic IQ, can contort his body to catch the ball in many different ways. And I think he profiles as someone who Bryce Young will have a lot of fun with. And Deontay Johnson is a nice little speedy option. Helps mitigate for, you know, the deficiencies of guys like Adam Thielen. And hopefully Jonathan Mingo can get going here. But overall, the profile of this Panthers offense is starting to become more promising than it was last year. And, like I say, it can't get any worse, can it? So Bryce Young can be someone who you also might not draft immediately, but might be able to stream later on in the season. A high value pick there. Then let's go into more position players because as we get into the season, position players will find themselves on the waiver wire. You might be thinking about picking one up should your own running backs, wide receivers, what have you, not be performing. And these guys will certainly almost always be available on the waiver wire. And I like them as well in the flex position if you do so draft them. Let's start off with a guy who my dad might like. Shout out to my father if he is watching. Bo Melton. My dad, well, actually, will have mixed feelings about him because he is a Rutgers guy, but he plays for his rival team. But Bo Melton is an interesting proposition because I look at this Packers wide receiver room and I look at how young and youthful it is. The youngest in the NFL still. I think about how Matt LaFleur is going to incorporate all of these players, make sure that everyone's happy in the system and analyze, most importantly, what traits and what positions of the field matter to the most. And Bo Melton profiles as someone who's very interesting. I think that at the end of the day, he's not always going to be the best performer because I still think, you know, Jaden Reed will probably eventually profile as a wide receiver. And one I like Wicks kind of as, you know, that slot receiver and then Maybe a guy like Malik Heath will break out as a red zone or vertical threat or something of that nature. Romeo Dobbs as well. But Bo Melton is always going to be a sneaky good guy. For example, in week 17, he had a 22.5 fantasy point performance on 105 yards. That's a solid example of someone who later in the season had a game like that that you may not have known about and could have picked up should you have felt like your receivers were struggling. And so you always have to play the chess game. Be aware of the waiver wire. Be aware of guys like Bo Melton, especially on a Packers team that doesn't necessarily have their mindset on, you know, wide receivers and how they profile. So Bo Melton is going to be a sneaky little guy. Then the last guy is a guy who I really like. We've talked about this running back room and what it's looked like in prior years compared to this year, and this guy, I hope, doesn't sneak under the radar just because Derrick Henry is there, and that is Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell is someone who I really think should not go underestimated in this Baltimore Ravens offense. I hope and pray that Greg Roman will still utilize him to some effect, because when I think about the Baltimore Ravens, and I think about what their running back room has looked like in recent years. I've really loved their committee approach, focused around guys who can really bring out the best and supplement. As we get a tip from my mom, Meryl Shepard, shout out to her, the Rio Astalis. Thank you. We continue with the show here. Keenan Mitchell profiles as someone who represents that committee approach, represents someone who is going to be not potentially the number one guy because that's Derrick Henry right now unfortunately in my humble opinion but he is someone who brings that explosive factor could be a red zone factor and 
interesting stat about him, the 26% of attempts that he did get last year, 26% of them were 10-yard gains. And he is someone who I just don't think the Ravens ha have to let fall to the wayside just because Derrick Henry is here. And in all reality, he could have been the starting quarterback this year, and I would have been fine with it just because of how effective he can be in terms of how the offense is supplemented around Lamar Jackson. Because at the end of the day, Lamar Jackson, no matter how he profiles, is a dual threat guy who really likes RPOs, really likes to spread offense, and really will have a lot of open lanes no matter who is at running back because that's how they set up their offense. But Keenan Mitchell is someone who can be a home run stream pick in later rounds should he, you know, get more opportunities. What if Derrick Henry goes down? Then Keenan Mitchell can finally step into that role that I feel like he deserved. But let me know what you think in the comments, even though we are winding down in showtime. We might get a little more time here. But those four guys, those are my deepest of sleepers. These are guys who you might not even draft or consider drafting, but could in the future be guys who you might A, stream, or B, find on the waiver wire later in the season, and they will find success for you and your team. And that will just about do it for today's edition of the show. Thank you to all who have contributed in the comments. Thank you to all those who have tipped in the comments as well. Shout out to you, Mom. Also, reminder that you should like, follow, and subscribe to the show and the network if you do feel so inclined. It's not just about comments. It's about getting a bigger brand for the network. We appreciate everything you do for us. Also, follow us on social media so you can look at some short content. We have a lot of shorts explaining what's going on in our shows. Be sure to check out my fellow podcasters as well. All of them are crushing it right now. Fantastic shows, fantastic content, all found in the GSMC Sports Network. But this has been the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. I have been Chris Shepard. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back better than ever tomorrow. Thank you. Peace out.